Thanks for staying with us. Time now for Africa News with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, the UN warns that with over a million people facing food shortages in Central African Republic, the ongoing exodus of Muslim traders fleeing for their lives could just make matters worse. This is French peacekeepers slam Christian militia, calling them the enemies of peace. Also, France meets the US and Africa is on the menu. President Barack Obama hails his French counterpart's efforts to fight extremism across the continent as Francois Hollande pays a state visit to the White House. And dressing to impress. Despite their modest means, a group of working class fashionistas in Democratic Republic of Congo spend hundreds on shoes and clothes. They've finally got the recognition they crave, though, with a popular TV advert spot. Thanks for staying with us. First up, Christian fighters in Central African Republic who initially took up arms against former Seleka rebels, but now target Muslims they accuse of collaboration have come in for harsh criticism today. French troops seized weapons from anti-Balaka militia in Bongi on Tuesday and warned that they'd become the enemies of peace. While Muslims continue to flee the violence meted out by the anti-Balaka, the exodus from the country means that traders who supply staples are gone and market stalls are empty. The UN reckons that over one million people, a quarter of the population, already are in need of urgent food assistance. This after months of inter-religious violence. Well, for more on this, we're joined now by the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, Antonio Guterres. He's in Bangui right now. Um, Mr. Guterres, thanks very much for joining us. Now, you're worried that the food crisis is just going to get worse. Well, it's the food crisis, but it's not only a food crisis. Uh, we are witnessing here a humanitarian catastrophe. Massive ethno-religious cleansing, indiscriminate killings, uh, in some situations, massacres taking place. Uh, we see uh, still people forced to flee, sometimes having nowhere to go. Uh, we see ghettos being formed. Uh, and uh, uh, at the same time, uh, insecurity going on. We have about uh, 7,000 troops uh, uh, on the ground. It's not enough. There needs to be an immediate surge. And uh, the international community needs to come together for an immediate surge in the military presence uh, uh, to make sure that security is reestablished. But of course, it's not a military answer that we need. We need a political answer uh, in a country where the state already was not existing. Now the, two, the fabrics of society are also being destroyed and we need a massive humanitarian operation. And unfortunately, with Syria, with South Sudan, this is falling uh, into the cracks of, humanitarian, of international attention. And uh, uh, all the humanitarian agencies that are working here uh, uh, and doing, uh, some of them uh, with enormous courage, uh, uh, a very important job, they are totally under-resourced. They have not the means that are necessary to cope with this dramatic challenge. Now, you're saying that there is, a, there is a, in your opinion, a role that the international community uh, can, and can further play to tackle the challenges faced by Central African Republic. But part of the reason behind the violence and the scarcity of food is because of the growing rift between communities themselves. What can be done to try and get the message through to, for example, the anti-Balaka that by targeting Muslims, they're actually making it harder to feed the rest of the population? Now, it's not only necessary to send a clear message. It is essential that message is followed by action on the ground. We have uh, widespread banditry. We have people, as I said, doing ethnic and religious cleansing, doing massacres. They must be stopped. And uh, uh, this is not only a matter of persuasion. It's also a matter of creating the conditions to impose peace on the ground. And for that, the force that is present in the South African Republic is simply not enough. There must be a surge. And the surge is needed now. Uh, uh, without that, uh, I think that we risk this going on and on. Um, uh, probably, uh, if uh, nothing happens in the western part of the Central African Republic, there will be no Muslim population in a few months' time. And, uh, and this Gutierrez? means that uh, lots, of important, lots of important elements of the society are disappearing and the society will become simply not sustainable. Thank you very much. Antonio Guterres there, the UN's High Commission for Refugees, speaking to us about some of the challenges faced in Central African Republic.
On another news, Malian jihadist group, the Movement for Oneness and Jihad in West Africa, or Mujal, say that they are behind the kidnapping of a team of Red Cross workers. The five Malian citizens went missing whilst travelling between the northern cities of Kidal and Gao on Saturday. The ICRC says that it still can't confirm the Al-Qaeda-linked sect's claims. The organisation is in contact with the group. A UN-backed court in Tanzania has acquitted on appeal a Rwandan ex-general of genocide charges. Judges agreed that General Augusta Dindiliyamana on the grounds that he didn't have effective authority over the subordinates who carried out the abuses during the 1994 mass killings of Tutsis and politically moderate Hutus. The court also acquitted Major François-Xavier Zouanemai for a former commander of an elite battalion of involvement in the murder of the Prime Minister and 10 Belgian blue hats at the start of the genocide. Algerian authorities say that 77 people were killed when an army transport plane slammed into a mountain on Tuesday. One person survived the crash near the town of Ain Kersha. The militaries blamed the accident on poor weather. Well, standing side by side at the White House, the leaders of France and, and the US today vowed to coordinate efforts to fight extremism in Africa and boost development across the continent. Well, French President François Hollande is in, on a state visit to the US and today President Barack Obama hailed his counterpart's efforts to tackle conflicts across Africa. Philip Crowther brings us more from Washington. This is the kind of visit where France and the United States have uh, been insisting that uh, they are grateful for each other's cooperation, for each other's security cooperation uh, more than anything. And what they're talking about there uh, is Africa and more concretely uh, the French military operations in Mali and in the Central African Republic. There is gratitude, first of all, from the United States that France took the lead and put boots on the ground and that the United States only had to add uh, logistics and the likes of drones over Mali uh, to help. Out. And there is also well, gratitude from France that, United, that the United States did provide that help to make any kind of military operation like that one even possible. There is cooperation also in a commercial sense, militarily speaking, because it is, after all, the United States that uh, sold the first two Reaper drones to France that are now active uh, over northern Africa well, as we speak. Uh, there are also promises from, the, from France and the United States uh, to work closer on global development and also in the fight against uh, HIV, AIDS and against malaria in Africa. Uh, all sorts of uh, messages that there will be more uh, collaboration, more cooperation uh, between these two countries in Africa uh, in the near and also in the more distant future. Philip Crowther there for us from Washington. Well, in Nigeria, 11 lawmakers who'd planned on defecting from the ruling party have been blocked from doing so by the leader of the country's upper chamber. David Mark is a heavyweight in President Goodluck Jonathan's PDP party and on Tuesday said that the lawmakers' planned exit could not go through until a court challenge was resolved. Jonathan's party has lost its parliamentary majority after a string of defections from the lower house with members switching to the rival APC. We finish now with men who dress to impress. Despite modest means, a group of working class fashionistas in Democratic Republic of Congo spend hundreds on shoes and clothes. The Society of Elegant Persons, or SAPES as they're known, are now turning even more heads than usual after taking pride, pride of place in a popular TV ad. Take a look. These are the famous sapeurs, or the Society of Elegant People. Initially under authoritarian ruler Mobutu, wearing bright clothes was a gesture of defiance. Thirty years later, the movement is no longer political. In SAP, you have four rules. You don't become a sapper. You were born one. You will honor SAP like your father and mother. You will never betray SAP, whatever the situation. And you will die as a sapper, like Stervos Nyakos did. Stervos Nyakos was the king of the Kinshasa SAP. Every year around his tomb there is a competition to see who is the most elegantly dressed. This artist is called 100% Paper. He's abandoned brands. He recycles paper to create his own style. He even wears solar panels. I made these clothes in an African style because sappers' clothes are expensive. We have to borrow some or ask Congolese abroad to send some to us. That's why I do them here. 
And on this day of the sappers, you can buy my clothes for $35. He believes the movement has lost some of its soul, and his aim is to give SAP a new lease of life. Well, looking good. That wraps up, though, African news for me. For this hour, I will be back with more in about 60 minutes' time. Stay with us, though. More news and headlines from around the world. Take care.